Alright, welcome to episode 2 of this series that I am apparently doing, where I am trying to make something 3D in Scratch. Now, in the last episode, I got this triangle drawing, but I don't know if you can notice. Um, when I first started working on this episode, I discovered a new type of triangle type that I somehow managed to forget in the last episode, and I have now called it Triangle Type 5. The reason I discovered this is because I found a configuration that happened to match a mirror version of one of these originally six configurations that I had just completely ignored because I figured I didn't need them since they were running, you know, clockwise. But I realized that inverting them makes them go counterclockwise. And this was a configuration that I did not have support for and consequently it did not draw. And so now I have that drawing, it's configuration 5. All the other ones are different variations of already existing configurations. Making 5 and what looks like 2 kind of special, being that they're only one configuration of each. It seems like 3 is a fairly common configuration, both 3 and 1. But anyway, that's not important. What's important is that that is now working. What else is working is back face culling, because I have already calculated, in the previous episode, the winding order of the vertices, which means if I go ahead and swap this to make this run clockwise, and I hit the play button, which is another recurring theme, um, it does not draw the triangle, which is correct. That's what it's supposed to do. Because if you think about it, if we run these triangles, not the triangles, we run the vertices this way, you know, they're running in this order when we're looking at it, then if you think about it, if we were to start rotating around the triangle, the perspective shift would probably make it start to look like this as we got close to the edge, you know, until it's flat. And then once we circled around to the back, um, well, I mean, we would see it if it was an actual physical solid object, but since most things in 3D are completely enclosed so that you can't see the insides, we don't bother drawing the back faces anyway. So any triangles that are facing away from us are not drawn, and that process is called back face culling. And in 2D, even after, you know, a triangle has been projected from 3D into 2D onto the screen, I can still use the winding order to determine whether or not it is facing towards or away from the camera. And so now I can just completely refuse to draw triangles facing away from us. Awesome! The next thing I want to do is change up this method a little bit, because right now it'll only draw the triangle defined by these three handles right here. But instead, I want it to be able to be commanded to draw a specific triangle with specific vertices and be able to do it over again with any arbitrary vertices that I give to it. And so I would do something like function arguments for this if it were, you know, classical programming, I guess I'll say. Um, but in Scratch, um, the only things that have arguments like that are operators, and it does not seem you can create your own operator blocks. Um, so I guess what I'll do is I'll have some variables that I guess apply to all sprites that are function argument variables, because I've already created global variables um, like return x and y and also return that correspond to return values of functions. That's how I managed to accomplish return values. So I may as well do the same thing for function arguments. So I'm going to work on that and get back to you once that's working. Little did I know, I already had variables just like that. And they are x, or I guess vert, vert 0 through 2, but the strange thing is, the order they actually go in is 0, 2, 1 from bottom to top, just because of the way I started making it. But the trouble is, those aren't actually variables for all sprites. It's only for the quad sprite. And I don't imagine that I want the quad to handle everything, because then this code would start getting unmanageable, and it's already kind of unmanageable. So I have to do the tedious task of replacing all of these with the correct global variables, I guess you could say, while trying not to get um, uh, messed up by the weird orders that I have given these variables. So, wish me luck. Nope, never mind. Changed my mind. This is too much. Instead, what I will be doing is replacing all of the instances where I'm getting something from the uh, vertices list with uh, just these global variables right here. That seems like it would be much more manageable. 
All right, that took way longer than it probably should have, and I need to check something real quick. All right, um, so now I have these um, one, two, three, four, five, six input variables for the different coordinates of the different vertices. And while I was fiddling with that and fiddling with the sliders, I found out that there were certain configurations, specifically when there was a perfectly flat horizontal edge between two vertices, it would fail to draw properly, and that boiled down to at least for these two so far, I just needed some less than or equal to checks. And with those in place, it now looks like every kind of triangle that I could possibly want draws perfectly, except for the ones facing away from us, which aren't supposed to draw anyway. Um, so, yeah, basically the idea is once these variables are populated with the triangle that needs to be drawn on screen, um, the draw triangle method can be called on the quad sprite and it will draw it on the screen with the pen extension right there however because at the beginning of the method it goes ahead and clears the pen right yeah it erases all that means only one triangle can show up at a time so that erase all and all that stuff like that will be handled at a different point in the future but now that i've got arbitrary triangles I think I'm going to try and move on to, let's say, camera control. Like, set up some variables for the camera and get mouse movement looking around and WASD moving forward and back and left and right. Let's see how that goes. And you know what? Just because I feel like it, let's put the camera and motion controls on the little scratch cat sprite here. So, scratch cat sprite here will be handling getting input from the mouse and the keyboard, and he will be broadcasting that to the quad sprite, I guess, which is the sprite responsible for drawing triangles. It's originally called quad because I originally wanted to only draw quads, and if I manage to get far enough, I will explain why. But in the meantime, let's give scratch cat some input handling. All right, I've run into my first problem. I noticed that Scratch Cat here only knows about the mouse cursor if it is in the window, or, well, its position clamped to the window, unfortunately. Um, I don't think there's any way around that, but that might mean that at the very least, looking around will be kind of irritating. Um, hmm, let me see if I can do something about that. All right, here we go. So we've got Scratch Cat indicating the up-down uh, direction of the camera, and I have this little arrow right here indicating the you know top-down perspective of the left-right look of the camera. So this looks like a good camera control. I mean, it doesn't actually have us looking around in a 3D scene yet, but at least we have a working camera so far. So I guess the next thing I will try is movement. Let's see how that goes. Okay, that wasn't too difficult. So I can move forward and back with this little character I've got here, but of course I can also turn around by holding space and then moving the mouse. And I can actually do both at the same time, like this. So that works. And it is kind of cumbersome to control. And it's also kind of disorienting, seeing that I'm controlling this from a top view. But hopefully this will be controlled from, well, not hopefully, it will be controlled from a first-person view once I've got 3D working. So this is just a 2D representation of the 3D camera. So let me see what's next, or if maybe it's time to wrap up. Okay, I'm back, and it looks like we do have some time left in this episode. Um, I've been gone for a little while between clips because I've been working on perspective projection. I decided I'd go ahead and do that. And it, uh, it went okay. I'm not going to go into the implementation details just yet. So far, I've kind of been assuming that most people watching do not have an in-depth understanding of computer graphics. But just in case there are those who do, I actually want to go more in-depth in involving the implementation details in the next episode, along with the implementation details of whatever I decide to do from here on out, because it's going to start getting really technical. But for now, let's just bask in the glory of this single yellow triangle. There are actually three, but I can't show them to you here, because it lags so badly that I can't 
use it in normal Scratch, I happened to come across this thing called Turbo Warp, which is the only way that this project will work. From what I heard, basically what it does is it recompiles a Scratch project to just raw JavaScript so that you can get the best performance and speed out of it that's absolutely possible. And it also has Turbo Mode and 60 FPS Mode which I've had to turn on both of those just to get this project to work. But once I do that, okay, that's not the button to click. It works. I mean, it's a little choppy. I'll go into full screen. It's a little choppy, but that's because I have this refresh variable up here so high. And here's what that does. I will say this, there is a forever loop um, in the script that is responsible for drawing the triangles. However, it only does that once every refresh number of frames. And the reason it does that is because if it doesn't, it flickers horribly. I don't really understand why, um, but if for some reason I was just fiddling around with everything, trying to come up with something to get it to work. And this was the thing that got it to stop flickering, of course, at the expense of frame rate. So yeah, the frame rate's buttery smooth, it, but it's flickery if I turn the refresh all the way down to zero, but all the way up at um, 30,000, which seems to be the most that I am willing to put up with before the lag is just too much. Well, it's not as flickery, not by a lot, but lag. I've run into a lot of problems, needless to say. But in the next episode, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep moving forward with this and see what I can do. But that's all for this one. We've got perspective projection and this is a huge I keep right clicking. This is a huge milestone, I would say. And it's running in scratch of all things, even though it is turbo mode. But that's all for now. Stay tuned for the next episode and thanks so much for watching. Bye.